coming to you live on this technical difficulty Sunday. It's the All Access 660 show. For those of you who are out there listening, thank you so much for staying on and staying with us. We did have some issues this morning. Um, I am your host, Mo Morris, along with my partner, Mr. Rasul Sharif. And always, as always, our third man in the building is our resident engineer. I don't know what happened this morning, but we had some issues with our computer uh, system and our streaming, and we were uh, unable to stream. Um, also, part, first, we'll start with this. Partner, how are you today? We'll just start with that. It's a crazy day, man. Crazy day, but... This might wind up being the best show ever. It might end up being the best. It may okay, wind up being the best show ever. We're going to find out. We're going to find out? We're giving everybody a hard hour straight. One hour straight, no commercials. All right, let's go. So let's, let's go. So first and foremost, it's a very special day for us in here today because we have a couple of guests in the building. Um, the first guest, um, who will not be on the air... Uh, she's an actor. She could be on oh, wait, summer time, summer. I, full disclosure? Full disclosure. So we tried this at 10 o'clock. We she did. wanted no parts of it. The difference of an hour. She's wide awake now. She's wide awake. She's making noise in the back. She's walking over here now. She's the, exactly. Right. This is going to be a crazy hour. Uh, probably. Right. So we have uh, Miss Aisha Hines in the building. Um, as well as Miss Kelly Stewart. Um, both of these young ladies are actresses. They have their own um, shows and movies in, in their own right. Um, first off, we'll start with Miss Aisha Hines. You have seen her in the movie Unstoppable. You've seen her in Weeds, the TV show on Showtime. You've seen her on Hawthorne, The Shield, Detroit 187. She's currently working on a TV show right now that's going to be showing on every Friday on the CW Network called Cult Fridays. How are you today, Miss Hines? I'm fantastic. Okay, I'm glad oh, that wait, you're here. Wait, holy cow. This yeah, is like exactly. a totally different person. What's up out there, All Access 660? <laughs> How y'all doing? Absolutely. And then the other young lady we have in the building is Miss Kelly Stewart. You have seen her on Guess Who? You have seen her on Hot Tub Time Machine, the movie. Um, you've seen her on Law & Order. Um, most recently, she was on My Boys for four seasons. Um, she's currently working on two different projects, one on Lifetime called Witches of the East End, and the other one is called Middle Age Rage. Miss Kelly Stewart is in the building. Good morning. Good morning, All Access. I'm glad y'all stayed around because we stayed around. Yes, we did. So as we said, um, this was a situation where we actually went through a full interview with Miss Kelly Stewart um, in the first in the ten o'clock hour, actually. And yes, I was very good. Mo was questionable. Oh, wow! Really? Are we really going to go there? Seriously, today? this might get crazy. No, it's not going to get crazy. Well, we so, said this is full disclosure. So for those of you who don't know, oh, um, <laughs> Kelly and I have been friends for. A lot of years. Um, she is, without question, one of my closest friends in the world. Um, I've also known Miss Aisha Hines just as, actually, I've known her probably about six days, five days longer than I've known <laughs> Kelly Stewart. As crazy as that sounds, this not. This is true. That this is, is true. That, that is very true. There was true. a lead in. There was a lead in. <laughs> there was a lead in. I, I actually I was met. the rehearsal like this morning. <laughs> so and I. You were the main event. I actually met uh, Miss Hines on the way to Mexico um, in the North Airport, I think, if I remember correctly. We were on our way to Mexico to a film festival. And then, ironically enough, I met Miss Kelly Stewart on the way back from that exact same film festival. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, I was able to meet these two ladies. Um, at that time, they were up-and-coming actresses. They were still working day jobs, but they were grinding and doing what they needed to do in order to become successful in, in each of their own rights, obviously, out in L.A., um, I'm so proud of both of them. So um, I guess we're going to start. And since we are both are going to you both are going to be doing an interview, the questions are going to be to both of you. Obviously, um, you guys chime in however it is you want to do it. Um, the first question I have is, A, how did you get started? Why did you get started? Um, how do you feel about the fact that you actually got started in this business? You want to take this AI? OK. Um Let's see, let's roll the tape back. My father, my father, um, the first movie that my father took my family to see, took me to see, I was introduced to the medium of film by going to see Gandhi. Not some animation film for kids, something that would have been friendly to my brain. My father just thrust us out there and put us in front of Gandhi. And I remember thinking that Ben Kingsley was actually Gandhi. And so when the, medium, when, when the medium was broke down for me and I realized that, oh, this is an actor and he's actually telling this story and he's actually able to impact lives and give people information and it just, it, 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 
affected me in such a way that I knew that this was something that probably I would want to be doing for the rest of my life. And then following that, my mother took me to my first Broadway show, which was Serafina on Broadway. And I remember now seeing a young girl who looked like me and, you know, just something that I could access again inspiring me in such a way and so at that point that I knew that there was this was something that I wanted to do with the rest of my life and so I began to pursue it as such and went to um, the school in New York LaGuardia Performing Arts and just continued going forward from that point. I like how you use the word access. You know. I see what you did with that. You see what I did there? Yeah, I like just, you know, <laughs> sound bite, all okay. access. I see 660 you. I like in the building. I like your friends, man. I like your friends. <laughs> Absolutely. And Miss Stewart? Well, um, mine was actually theater based. I, um, I think I was around seven or ten years old, and my mother was waking me up for school, and she decided, I remember she used the word, we're going to play hooky today, and um, we got dressed and got in the car. I think she was just feeling free that day, and she took me to New York City, and we saw the Broadway musical Cats. So that was my first introduction to theater, and I actually remember... Um, there's a part in the show where the cats come off the stage and do a little dance and they run back to the stage and I happen to be on the aisle seat, which children usually are not. But I got up and started to run to the stage following one of the cats. And I remember my mom grabbed me and was like, no, 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 you can't go up there. And I was like, why, why? And that kind of is when the madness began. So I, I got into community theater and I would do summer programs in Philly at Freedom Theater. And then eventually I went to uh, SUNY Purchase here in New York, upstate, and studied and um, moved to Brooklyn. And then I actually became a, a modeling agent and um, represented Miss A.I. Hines over here for a moment or two. And, and then um, went out to L.A. Very nice, very nice. You guys kind of took the same path, but a little bit different. And that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. I appreciate that. Um, I guess my next question for you guys is, so right now we're going through pilot season or you guys are going through pilot season and I'll let you guys explain exactly what pilot season is, but I just needed to know, how do you guys deal with the ups and downs of pilot season? I know this sometimes it's very emotional um, because you're getting rejected quite a bit. Um, you have to go through these auditions in front of all of these people and it just has to be a hard thing. So just kind of give me a perspective of how that works each time. I have a real quick answer <clears throat> for that. Um, I'm going to let Kelly probably explain the whole logistics of pilot season and how it works and how it's set up. Um, for me, the first few years of pilot season probably was something that started to just really affect me as an actor and, and my soul. And, it, you know, I, sometimes it can be very, very discouraging and challenging. But then I had to resolve that God created four seasons Winter, Spring, Summer, Fall, and Pilot was not the fifth one. And so I surrendered. <laughs> really? I surrendered to his program and his seasons for my life. And I realized that, you know, I didn't have to give my life over to these first four months of the year every year. Like, it wasn't going down like that because throughout the year, God was still effective. And he was still getting me jobs and still providing and making a way. And, you know, my path was was written way before the foundation of the earth. And so it wasn't going to be just reduced to this pilot season. And so funny that you would say that we have a similar path, Kelly and I, because that's our running thing that, you know, we've kind of been side by side in our journeys. And so, you know, sometimes when it's high for her, then it becomes high for me. When it's low for me, it becomes low for her, you know, and God has always placed us in each other's lives. So it's so ironic that we had you in a sandwich in our lives. Like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoa, wait, this is, a, this is a family show. I get too far with this. I, too so far. basically what you're saying is you guys are there for each other when, you know, one of you is going through a, a down period and when one of you is obviously going through a high period, you're there for each other as well. So that's... Like, yeah. no other. It's, it's a very strong friendship bond and also artistic bond and I think that people that really persevere have to have that because you have to have some foundation and for the people listening that might not know exactly what pilot season actually is it's a period of um, three or so months where all the networks you know from ABC to HBO to you know everything um, where they order pilots and they cast them. So that's our, our most busy season. As an actor, you can have up to, you know, you can have anywhere from 5 to 12 auditions a week. And um, as AI said, you do go through a lot of rejection, and, and, and 95, 98% of our career is a no. Um, but 
we do keep each other thinking and feeling and knowing that God is first and knowing that it's our talent and our bond as friends and we have a lot of people out there that go through the highs and lows you just got to keep each other up you know you got to keep each other focused and you just got to know that whatever your time is it's going to come in a big bright shining way I mean I text Aisha is working right now on Under the Dome which is a show that's going to be on CBS am I correct which is um a Stephen King based off of a Stephen King novel and she's shooting that um, in North Carolina. And I just shot the Lifetime series in North Carolina. So Same we place, really right? are side by side. Absolutely. When but you told me that, I laughed uh, totally a couple weeks ago. Totally side by side. Yeah. But I actually texted her a couple weeks ago and was like, you know, because I had something coming up in, um, in L.A. And I said, Aisha, I need you to pray on this because, you know, I'm feeling down. I'm not, re- I'm not able to encourage myself in this moment. And like clockwork, she comes in with all the words and wisdoms that I need to know. And I think it was 24 hours later that the job was had. So we keep, each, you know, we can hold each other down. Very nice. Very nice. Kind of like you and Rasul. <laughs> Absolutely. It's exactly like <laughs> Mo holds me down. <laughs> oh, no. Rasul, I do nothing for this relationship. Oh, would you stop? Would you stop it, please? Seriously. As I always say, he is the brainchild behind this operation. Over That's here. why I didn't work out today. See what happened with 25 you weeks, man. Come on. It, it obviously is working out. So I'm, mm-hmm. I'm definitely not going to even say that. Mm-hmm. All right. I guess my next question for you guys is um, downtime. What are you doing in your downtime? I know you get, um, I don't want to say quite a bit of downtime, but more than the average person who works a nine to five job, you guys get a little bit more downtime because, as you said, you have a three to four month period where you are grinding like really hard. And I get it. But what are you doing in your downtime? How do you spend it? Um, the perception probably is that you guys vacation all the time. Um, you are partying all the time. I understand that that's not the case, but just what do you do? Um, in the downtime, I would have to say we, probably, we try to keep ourselves fed, you know, whether it's creatively by, you know, like last night, Kelly and I, you know, have the distinction of seeing Cicely Tyson on stage. Cicely Tyson nice. is a legend, you Absolutely. know, and she still runs the Bush. board. She wow. runs that stage. She, she literally had probably, you know, a, a, a supporting cast of like 99 people on that stage. <laughs> wow. <laughs> on that stage. No, I'm joking. I'm exaggerating. <laughs> but she did have quite a large supporting cast, but there's something about every time Cicely Tyson opens her mouth and even in her silence that she just a, takes up the entire room. And so, you know, we went, you know, to see a couple of plays on Broadway. We try to keep ourselves fed creatively. We try to keep ourselves, you know, physically fed. We also try to keep ourselves fed physically because we like to eat good food. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, we travel the world. We do travel a little bit. And, we, you know, we get to our favorite places and just try to do things that feed our spirit and keep us, you know, happy. Yeah. And we also, we, you know, we write. We we got to get some stuff out because even though we grind during pilot season, if we book a series, like, for instance, when My Boys was on the air, I was on the air for four consecutive years. Right. So I was shooting for four consecutive years. And um, so I didn't have as much downtime then. But when you do, you know, you, like Aisha said, you have to keep yourself creatively fed so whether that's an outlet of writing or whether that's an outlet of doing theater whether that's an outlet of doing community service or whatever we can do you know we've we've tried to 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 maintain a a sense of realism because hollywood is just not real you know and the business that we're in is not normal it's not normal to get rejected you know like 15 times a week it's just not you know it's not a, a normal emotional experience so you always have to just keep everything very, very basic. And, you know, we were the same people when we lived in Brooklyn that we are now living in L.A. I will, Speaking of rejection. I, I will yeah, have, let's speak of rejection. We, 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 <laughs> oh. See, we're going back to, like, the full disclosure we were having when we were this down. Show, this show is about to go left down <laughs> in a hurry. <laughs> Get to the dating question, Mo. <laughs> All right. So the next question I have for you guys is reality TV. Do you watch it? Do you like it? Um, if you do watch it, what shows do you watch? Should we just speed this along so we can get to the real, the real deal? <laughs> exactly. Oh wow. <laughs> um, yes, I kicked and screamed. Honestly, you know, admittedly, I kicked and screamed about the whole advent and and infiltration of all this reality TV that was happening, and then found myself fully addicted to some of the most ridiculous drama on television. And you know, 
I do. I do watch me some love and hip hop. I do get wrapped up into Tahiri and Joe Budden's dysfunctional <laughs> love. I am fully sucked into Yandy and Mendeecee's situation right now. Found myself praying for Mendeecee's and wow. Yandy's baby. I mean, it's a wow. situation in these streets, you know, but... Yeah. Honestly, I realized <laughs> <Sorry. I> re- <laughs> she is from Brooklyn, so uh, that's it. Hey, that's right. clear. She is from I re- Brooklyn. <laughs> I am. Shout out to Brooklyn. I realized that you know, with the rejection, with with so much of the pressure and the stress from our job and the stuff that we do on a daily basis, I literally call it like mindless time. Sometimes I just need to go home and watch some mindless television. Um, and so that is my mindless television hour of the day. Very nice. And Miss Stewart. Everything she just said. <laughs> She's trying to accelerate this conversation. Yes. No, it's the truth. That everything that she just said is the exact same experience mm. that I have with reality TV. All right, so I want to thank you guys for coming in. Speaking of reality <laughs> TV, oh, wow. uh, we, we have, have some reality TV right now. Are we, here, are don't we, we getting? Are we, we getting reality <laughs> radio? Here's right. here's the deal. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to cut our interview short. Oh really? Because we have to pay our bills so that we can eat. So we have to actually start talking about sports. You guys are more than welcome to stay. Oh, I love talking about sports, yes. especially okay. the sport of dating. Yes, Absolutely. the sport of dating, the, the sport of men and women. And since we're sitting here amongst wait, can I can I say one thing? Four no. men, we could ask some questions. So, you know, we could have some listeners type well, in some. We questions We literally for us. have to get into our sports segment because we only have about forty-seven minutes, I think, left, and we have a ton of stuff to go through today. So, why don't you guys shout out your Twitters? Cause that way, um, people can follow, start to follow you guys. Because I know you both have Twitters. If I'm, actually, I know you both definitely have Twitter. So, please shout them out. Yes. My Twitter is Aisha Hines. That's my handle. A-I-S-H-A-H-I-N-D-S. Do you follow back? I do. Okay. She'll follow you back, guys. She'll if you're talking you about something, if not, she may I will not follow you back. Unfollow back. back. <laughs> so, you're going to start following the show going forward. Is that correct, Miss Hines? I will absolutely I appreciate it. start following the show. And Miss Stewart? Uh, it's my name as well, Kelly underscore Stewart is on my Twitter. handle on Twitter. Yeah, and I follow all excess. I, that I know she is all our XX. first Twitter follower. So we I really, am the really, first. You you are without question the first Twitter follower. The one so. and only. We're, are we the first female guests on the show? You are absolutely the first female guest. We've had a couple of male guests, but you guys are the first female guest. I feel honored. So I definitely want to say thank you guys so much. You don't understand definitely. what it means to us for you guys coming in, spending a few thank minutes you. with us. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are doing a great job. I'm very proud, and it's a wonderful show. So thank you. Thank you. We are grinding. We are trying. We're trying to figure out how we can make this more successful. Um, we are working on it without question. As I said, um, I want you guys to stay around. By all means, jump in. I mean, we have a lot of stuff to go into. You guys have probably heard some of the stuff. We're going to talk about Rutgers basketball and their coach today. We're going to talk about the NBA. Obviously, you guys have your own perspectives about that. And we're going to talk about the Lakers, so you guys can jump in at any point in time. So I guess we're going to probably go ahead and get into the NCAA games from yesterday, right, Mr. Russell? I know you kind of want to... the greatest day of my life. I'm serious. Easily. Easily the greatest day of my life. Is it really? Yes. Okay. Well, it's the greatest day of your life. Do you want to go ahead and start your little rant about how you had Michigan winning the whole thing? Or no, no, it's not over wanna... yet. It's not over yet. Oh, it's not over yeah. yet. But, I mean, last week you said, next week, uh, after Michigan loses, we'll talk about that. So I'm just wondering what you have to say right now. Um, I was wrong. I'm okay with that. Listen, I can't be right 100% of the time. Can you be I, right sometimes? I am right sometimes. Uh, really? A- a- absolutely. Okay. So yesterday we had the Final Four going on. It was uh, Louisville playing against Wichita State, and the other game was Michigan-Syracuse. I want to start with the Louisville-Wichita uh, State game. I am not a big fan of Louisville. Um, I've had some actual comments in the past about they're not that good. And truthfully, I still don't believe that they're that good. I just believe the talent is down in college basketball overall. Um, but what happened yesterday, the one, the biggest thing I want to talk about was Wichita kind of got out to an early start. They were up 8 nothing before Louisville even realized it. Um, and at one point, I think they were even up 12 or 14. So Wichita came out ready to play. So I commend them for that because I was worried that they were not going to be um, able to play with those guys, right? But then the reality of... Um, mid-major versus major came into effect. They just did not have enough horses to withstand the pressure from Louisville. 
Now, Louisville did lose one of their top players. Um, in full disclosure, Kevin Ware broke his leg last Sunday. So they were missing one of their guards. So they probably weakened their bench just a little bit um, because someone else had to start. But Louisville was able to come back. And once they took the lead, I think they went up one at one point um, with about four minutes to go. And at that point, I was actually at a poker party. And I said, yeah, that game's over. Because what happens is, is when a, a mid-major is playing Goliath, and, and we'll, we'll do it that way, um, essentially they become a little bit nervous when they let a lead go by and go away. So I was a little bit sad. Now, one of the things that happened in the game was there was a, uh, a jump ball call late in that game, which I didn't think was a jump ball. I think the referee called it a little bit soon. How do you feel about that? Well, first of all, I, um, I think you're a little disrespectful to Wichita. How am I disrespectful? They played 10 times. They, they will lose 10 times. Okay, they lose nine. Okay, let, let's be clear about it. They lose nine times. I think it would be 5-5. Five, five. Absolutely Six not. Six easy. They, they matched up well against them. They lost by four. I don't care how many they lost uh, by. So, at the end of the day, if you're going to play in a, in, a, in a best of seven, and, and let's not even say 10 times, let's just do a best of seven, they may get one game if they're lucky. Absolutely. Okay. Let's remember, Louisville was under way more pressure than Wichita at the end of the day. Oh, without question, because Louisville is the number one seed overall. Um, they have to beat this mid-major team. There's no way that they were not. They did not have more pressure than what Wichita did. And if they were playing in a seven-game series, they beat them easily. Like, a couple of those games won't even be close. So, Louisville's not that good to you. They're not. And but that tells still, you how I feel about Wichita. They're better than Wichita. Yeah, they are. That's just absolutely they, 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 they absolutely are. I can't believe you talk like that with your friends in the building. Unbelievable. What, what did you think about the, ch the the jump ball call? How did you feel about that? Did you see it? I didn't see that. Part. Okay, so about... And I only watched with, the first half. With less, okay, with less than uh, a minute to go in the game, um, there was a free throw taken, and Wichita State actually grabbed the ball, and the guy from Louisville stuck his hands in to try and tie him up. And the referee blew the whistle immediately. He didn't give them a chance to even fight for one of them to get the ball. And when that happened, it took the ball away from Wichita State because the possession arrow was going to Louisville. And it did not give them an opportunity to go down and tie the game because now they had to turn, I think it was 12 seconds, they had to turn around and file Louisville again because they were only down two. They yeah, had to file Louisville again. That doesn't matter to you. It wouldn't matter, right? What does not matter? The jump ball situation. Absolutely it matter because oh. it took an opportunity away from them. But you don't think Wichita would have beat him anyway. I don't. But at the end of the day, it took an opportunity away. I'm not talking about who was going to win the game at that point. Okay. It just took an opportunity away. And I have an issue with that. So that was the issue with that particular game. And there's an issue in the next game as well that, that I had a problem with as well. But, I mean, if you didn't see it, um, Louisville did win. I don't think we need to spend a whole lot of time on that particular game anyway. Um, the next game was the nightcap. Um, it was the bigger game, I guess, if you want to if you want to say it that way. Michigan played Syracuse. My, um, my Michigan Wolverines? Yes, your Michigan Wolverines. They played Syracuse. Michigan basically was winning throughout that entire game. They figured out the zone. They were able to get basically any shot they wanted. Just really quickly. Yep. Um, to cut you off. Um, Michael Carter Williams. How okay, do you feel what about him? He's up and down. Some days I, I feel really about him? like him, and then other days, not so much. So I try to make it a practice not to talk negatively about college kids and high school kids, obviously. Um, so I'm not going to be negative. But everybody it. else? If fair they're game. a pro, they're fair, fair game, game right. without question. Unless they're from Jersey. Then I give them a little bit more leeway because they're from Jersey. Kyrie? Okay. Sure. Well, no, no, no. I wasn't talking about Kyrie. I was talking about Kid Gilchrist, actually. <laughs> so I give them a little bit more leeway because they're from Jersey because they may develop. But what I'll say about um, Michael Carter-Williams, the point guard for Syracuse, for those of you who don't know, he's a big guy. I think he's 6'5". He runs the point. Um... I don't think he's as good as everyone makes him out to be. Is he a pro prospect? Absolutely. Does he need another year of school? Absolutely. But from what I'm hearing, he's going to be in, a, in potentially a lottery pick. Well, so we draft. If, I I, if listen, I'm advising him, I'm telling him to go. You're telling him to go for real? Yeah, I'm about the money. Go. Okay, I'm, I'm not mad at that. I, I'm, I'm not mad at that. He's going to get eaten alive at the next level. Yeah, but I think you can learn at the next level as well. And learning, it just seems to me, learning in college and learning at the pro, learning at the pros would be better. So. Fair, fair enough. So I was having this discussion when I was playing poker last night. Yes, you can learn at the next level. But the problem is, I think you have to have the talent at the level before. So you have to have the talent at the college level. Oh, no, and I definitely think he has the talent. Where? What? what he can't. What? He just can't. He hasn't put it together consistently. What does he do so, well to you? I think he's a above average distributor. 
I think he'll be a decent scorer. So I mean, really, if, if he's if he's fourteen and ten and fourteen and eight in the league, he's Jeremy Lin. Um, I don't believe he'll be fourteen and eight in the league at the end of the day. Um, and again, who knows? I mean, he's eighteen. I think actually no, he's twenty. He's a little bit older. I think. He's a sophomore. Twenty. He's a sophomore. Is he's a sophomore. He's a sophomore. Okay. Yeah, I think he's twenty. So maybe he'll develop. I don't personally see it. And you know what? I probably would advise him to go as well. I just don't think it's going to bode well for him at the next level. It's just my own opinion. Um, but Michigan ended up winning that game, obviously. Trey Burke did not play well. He did not play well the game before either. And no one's talking about it. He was the player of the year, which, you know, you and I both agreed that right. he probably would be. And I don't have an issue with that. Um, Are being you cool with him coming out? He's a sophomore. Again, I don't see him at the next level either because he's small. Was six one? No, they list him at six feet. I believe he's five ten from what I see looking at him. Is he, Obviously, but is he a poor man's AI? Someone compared him to Chris Paul, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so not the Aisha that's sitting in here. <laughs> <laughs> Someone compared him to Chris Paul, and I totally do not see it. I, I don't see it, and you know, again, I believe that he played against bigger guards, and I think it gave him trouble. So, I don't think like last night he was shooting from twenty eight feet and get a shot. And for me, when you get to the league, you're going to be playing every night against guys that are 6'4", 6'3", 6'4". But you're not playing against is. zones, though. I don't care. And, and and truthfully, I don't believe he gets by people very well. Um, when I watch him, I see him put the ball on the floor between his legs, but he's not going anywhere. He'll eventually get by you, but it's not a quick one, two, and go. I think it's tough to evaluate college players, especially... Uh, in games that they played against zones and you don't see those kind of zones in the NBA. So the NBA does allow teams to play zone but not the same way you can play a zone in college. So it's more difficult. And Chris Paul said himself, he got to the pros it was a lot easier because the court was more open for him. So I think he's quick enough to be able to get around guys. I think he'll be okay. I don't think he's going to be a superstar but I think he'll be okay. Like 14, 15, 16 points a game. Depends on where he is, what system he's in. As I said on these airwaves last week, we've seen this movie before. Randolph yeah. Childress, yeah, Rodney but, Monroe. Okay, those dudes were just straight shooters, though. Well, what is this guy? He's, those were two guards. He's what is this guard. guy? Is he really? Yes. Okay. I, well, you're comparing is he him as good as Dana Barrows in college? At Boston College? Yes. I, I don't see that at all. Because you're a, you're a scoring guy, so you're a flash guy. All. You like flash. You're a like flash guy. I like it all. <laughs> okay, that's a whole lot. When, <laughs> when I when I when I want to wow. watch a game, we only have when I want to watch a game. I want. I do. Are we I still talking wanna... about sports? Absolutely. Okay. okay, okay, okay. Can, we we still here. <laughs> Can we shut their mics off? Can we shut their mics off? That's sexist. That's sexist. <laughs> Just in case you were wondering, they're still in the building. They right? are definitely <laughs> still in the building, without question. Um. All right. I I don't really want to go any further into him. I mean, as you said, we don't have a whole lot of time. Um, what do you think about the Michigan uh, Louisville matchup, which will be tomorrow night? I think it should be a good game. I think we'll get some decent scoring, probably in the seventies, which will be refreshing because we see a lot of games in the forties and fifties in college basketball now, and maybe that's because of the talent that's there. Um, it's definitely not because they're playing super defense. So I still have Michigan. I picked them at the beginning; they were my um, champions in the bracket, as you know. But um, I definitely think it'll be a tough game, and I think it'll be close because I like Louisville defense. So, and that's where the trouble comes in. But I don't think their defense is better than Syracuse. Well, let me say it this way: what Mich- I saw, what I saw Michigan do to Syracuse, it uh, really makes me believe that they can handle Louisville's defense because the zone was incredible this year. But it's different though because now they're going to be pressed full court, and I don't know if I know that Trey Burke can handle the ball to point guard for Michigan. I don't know if anybody else can handle that pressure, and that's where the problem comes in for me. Can Can uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. handle the pressure and have to handle the ball because he will have to handle it at many times. When we get in the half court, can Siva stay in front of Trey Burke? Nobody stays in front of Trey Burke. He's going to shoot from twenty five feet regardless. He's just got to make it. He's not on, and he hasn't been. He's got the double green light. Oh, without question. <laughs> yeah, right. He's got the triple green light. Right. But I just believe that when Louis, because Louisville is going to try and speed them up at right. the end of the day, and, and they're going to press them, and they're going to probably press them from the very beginning. And I, I just don't know if Tim Hardaway Jr. has enough handle um, to be able to help out Trey Burke. And Trey Burke is small, so now if he gets caught in a double team, now he's got to try and throw over the top of it. That's an issue too. Listen, he's been dealing with that all year, um, and he's been getting through it. So he had a bad shooting night the last two two games, as you indicated. But I don't think it's going to be 
Like you're acting like they're not ever get the ball no, across half no, no, court. No, 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 I'm not acting like that at all. I just saw what Louisville has done the last few games with their defense. And although I don't think Louisville is that good, I think I've said this on the air, defense travels. And so far, their defense has been consistent each week, each and every week, um, or each and every game, I should say. So I, I don't anticipate it not being at the same level come tomorrow night. But again, you have Michigan. I really don't know who's going to win this game. It's a toss-up. I'm probably going to be rooting for Louisville just so, A, I don't have to hear your mouth. <laughs> I don't have to hear my boy's mouth. Because you uh, will hear it. Because I have a couple friends that are Michigan fans. I, I just don't even want to deal with it. All right, Michigan wins. Do I get the first 15 minutes to myself next week? You can always have the first 15 minutes. You, you didn't have to ask that. I have no problem with that. All right, just check it. Steve, you, no Jay-Z, first 15 minutes. <laughs> no, we, haven't, we haven't had any Jay-Z today. You don't have your headphones on. You had Jay-Z. Oh, did he? Yes. Okay. All right. You guys, you, lady, you young ladies heard See what I did with that, Steve? Bang. Okay. We heard it earlier, yes. yes. Okay. All right, cool. I'm apologize Thank to you, that man. Steve. Thank I'm you, Steve. Just, I'm just making sure. Let me shout Steve out, too. Um, there's someone chatting with me who said, uh, tell Steve we missed the music today. Look at that. I'm not sure. It says touch of love. Is that a male or female? <laughs> okay. Are you still going on at one o'clock at twelve? What, at twelve o'clock today? Yeah, we can extend it. Nine oh. Mo has so to go. So I have me to and you. Twelve o'clock. Right. We're gonna have a, a special um, co-host at twelve o'clock <laughs> to finish off the last hour. The, in, right. the insider is in the building. He's gonna take I'm just over. Excited that I finally get to see the insider. I just want to say that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Listening from the West Coast, I've always wondered what you know. What the insider looked like, and I'm looking at him, ladies and gentlemen. You actually got a chance to see our insider, and the outside is just as great. As Amen. The inside. Amen. Wow. All right, so let, let me let me set this up. He's a, he's a fair skinned guy. His face is turning red right now. <laughs> Yellow boys. Yellow boys. It's incredible. I never saw you flustered like this. Are you okay over there? Well, can he said he's can cool. we bring this back? <laughs> we we are down to 32 minutes, I think, at this particular point. We still got a host of things to go through. Rutgers. Red. We have to talk about Rutgers. And our insider is here. And he wants to hear my uh, my uh, perspective on this. So basically, for those of you who don't know, um, Rutgers came under fire over the last week, week and a half, because their basketball coach, their men's basketball coach, Bob Rice, um, there was some video of him throwing balls at players' heads throwing balls at players' feet, kicking them in the butt, grabbing them by the collar, uh, shouting all sorts of profanity, um, racial, not racial slurs, but um, homophobic slurs, um, all sorts of things going on. So here's the thing. Back in December, he was fined $50,000, and he also was suspended for three games. So that videotape came out in December. The athletic director, Tim Panetti, I think is his name, actually saw it. He fined him, he suspended him. So the punishment was already doled out. Unfortunately for Rutgers, um, one of their former coaches or player development um, personnel, um, that I think was what his title was, Eric Murdoch, formerly of the NBA. Um, I think he played for the Bucks, Milwaukee Bucks, and a couple of other teams. What's up, E? What's up, E? Yeah, we know, we know Eric, unfortunately. Well, fortunately, but unfortunately for this situation. Um, he put a video out. And basically what he did was he took a lot of footage from practices and he spliced them together. And the video showed all of these cruel um, situations to the players. So I'm going to start with my opinion. Actually, no, I'm going to let you start with your opinion because my opinion is probably going to differ from yours slightly. So I'm going to let you think, tell me how you feel about the situation and we'll go from there. All right, so clearly your coach should be fired. There's no, now, full disclosure, my high school coach used to hit us. Paddle used to hit us, and I was, it was funny. I was telling my mom, and she acted like she was going, I wish I would have known you. <laughs> Whatever, you should have came to the games, mom. But um, he used to hit us, and I didn't look at it like it didn't really hurt, so it wasn't like I didn't look at it like he was really trying to hurt me. Okay, so I could see I never got kicked by anybody, so I don't right. know. Right, that was too much. He didn't throw basketballs at us or do anything like that, but especially today, you can't be like that. Like, after I got out of high school and I went back to see them. He couldn't hit them anymore, so he started making them hit each other. So you lost the game, then you take the paddle and you go to high school. (laughs) And no, right, (laughs) Right, exactly. But so the coach should be fired. The AD definitely should be fired because I don't even know what else you have to see. Once you saw these actions, the same reaction that everybody else had when they saw it, everybody was like, "This is crazy. This shouldn't be going on." So a suspension wasn't enough for him. Now, to his credit, and more information is coming out. He said that um, 
or the president said at his press conference that the AD took the information to legal and legal said it's not enough to fire him and so ah, I didn't hear that, that was okay. the, that was the reason why he had the fine which made the president sound even crazier but that's a whole other topic once the president saw it for not even looking at it, once you're reporting some kind of abuse and there's some kind of video proof as a president, I think you have to he looked at look it. at it, which we all believe he looked at it. He's trying to save his own job right now, so he should definitely be fired. Um, I mean, if I'm on the board of directors, I'm cleaning house, clearly. It's not even clear. I don't know why it's taking this long. And all if right. that was my kid, I don't know what I'd be doing to that coach right now. Okay, so I'm with you a thousand percent. They all should have been fired including the president, because he didn't do his due diligence. But I'm going to start with the coach, and then I'm going to work my way forward, in, in my opinions. If you were going to fire him, it should have happened um, on December, whatever the day it was, when it was first saw, it was when, when the tape was first seen, right, when it was first given out. But now here's the thing. From what Eric Murdoch says is he went to the president, I'm sorry, the athletic director back in July about this situation, and nothing happened, Right. So now the situation goes, they go through, the season actually starts. Um, he's probably coached by December, probably five or six games at that point. They have definitely been practicing since October 15th or November 1st or whatever the first October day of practice. 15th, yeah. Right, day of practices. They've definitely been practicing. They decided to suspend them. My issue is, and I have a couple of issues. My first issue is he should not be fired today. I don't like the fact that social media and the media itself basically put pressure and made them fire this guy when he's already been punished. He, so he was punished. The school should be strong enough to handle whatever it is that they have going on internally and not let someone from the outside pressure them into doing something else right, because they clearly didn't want to fire. All right, let me, let me, let me stop you for a they second. They clearly didn't want to fire because they did not. Okay, let me stop so you Is for that a, a fact? No, definitely. Okay, all right, go ahead. But the media shined a light on it. Exactly. The people... Are putting the pressure on them. I don't. As a, if you were a parent, you found this out. Now the media allowed everybody to find out what was going on because nobody else knew. There was a small circle of people who knew what happened. That's it. I now don't. everybody else knows. So it's the people that are putting the pressure on. I don't disagree with you. So it's not the like, media. I agree, but it is the media. But right, I'm saying it's not the media. Like the media exposed it. No, and the media exposed it, and then they immediately started getting all of these talking heads on ESPN, CBS Sports Line. All of a sudden, they were actually. I'm sorry, I was tapping the table. They were actually um, calling for his firing immediately. Right, right. I guarantee you, the media and you saw the governor. And, exactly. And, and, but the Rutgers, Rutgers is a state, state school. school. So the governor, I get it. So the media exposed it. It's the people Again. That, that caused the pressure, not the media. So but I just want to clear that up. See, no, the, me, the, media, media. the media shined the light on the situation. Right? And then they started. They, so the media, and, and we do media now, right? I'm anti media. Like, I'm all against the media. So you're anti you. Right. Okay. And I am anti media. <laughs> right. Because I, the media has so much power and it influences the way people think. So they put stuff out there and if you play it enough and you and you say it enough, people start to believe it. So if people don't think independently for themselves, they will let anything go. It, well, it, it's it a double edged sword. Yeah. It's a double edged sword because with that the media can influence for good or for bad. So when you have the result being a good result, then at the end of the day you want to thank the media because the media is now holding this school accountable. It's notorious that these these sports programs hide their behavior and there's a lot of cover up in these sports pro in these major sports programs. So I think that when they initially found out about it, they weren't going to go for the firing option because now you have a sports program where obviously this coaching style, quote unquote, of this coach is producing the results that the university needs so that they can continue to get people to pay money for this sports program, send their kids there and people to come. So it's a domino effect. So they're not going to want to, you know, initially go for let's fire him. They're going to try to do well, an internal cover up. I have a problem with that. Well, wait, right, up. but see, but, th but then if, if they're held to a higher standard of accountability, they now, d you can't. But you're being held to a higher standard of accountability by the media or social media. Right, because yeah, but we live the, in a social media world now. I mean, we did, it's I never going to change. It's never going to go back to the way it used to, used to be. So everything is on display. And we all, as a society, have to know that. So I, I, I think it's a great thing that we get to see it. Let me give you this analogy: okay. a woman and a man is in a is, is in a relationship. Uh oh, I knew it was getting. No, I'm there. just saying. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. But the woman is being abused by the man. 
she doesn't take the initiative to say, get out, stop it, don't do it. Her family finds out. They're like, oh, hell to the Nizar. You need to get the strength. They give her some strength and they're like, no, you need to, you know, take care of yourself. They get authorities involved. And now this man is out of her life. Are you now mad at the people who influenced her to take care of herself to get this man out of her life to stop beating on her? So Aisha, you tried really hard to get me into something and you're not going to get me into I'm not trying to get you into that. I'm just giving you... I'm going to answer it this way. I don't believe the analogy is the same. Okay? And I'm 100% with you on the people should be there to support whomever it is that's in in a tough situation. This scenario, and I want to be clear so that everybody understands, he should have been fired from day one. Not saying that he should not have. I'm not saying that what he did was not horrible and, and, and despicable. Right, not but saying you're that. saying that because they didn't fire him then, they shouldn't fire him right, now. Right, because let's look at it from his perspective. He was given a $50,000 fine. He was suspended for three games. He had to go through anger management. He went through counseling. So... From his perspective is he thinks that he put that chapter behind him in his life. His family thinks that that chapter is behind no, them in their no, life. No, it takes more than a $50,000 fine that's, and that's, some anger management But classes. that's your opinion. But the AD, obviously, and the president, obviously, didn't think that that was the case. Let me, let me, let me, let me jump in for a second. I'll give Frank this credit. Um, I was going to say this, so I'm, I'm so waiting. Everyone knows. Everybody knows Frank now. Okay. All right. the, the pretty boy light skin dude. That's what I was just saying, so. <laughs> Remember this. Rutgers is trying to get into the Big Ten. So while all this stuff is happening, Rutgers is not trying to have any kind of controversy going on. Now it got brought to light and they have no choice but to deal with this. It happened that they're already in the Big Ten. But while this happened, they were in negotiations to leave the Big East and get in the Big Ten. Oh, let's stop for a second. When did they when did they get into the Big Ten? A few months ago. Was it this year? Last year. It was probably last year. the last year, somewhere towards the end of last year. Okay, because... because they're breaking up the Big East now. Okay, I get it. Right. But here, here's, here's where my problem comes in. They suspended that guy in December. So if, if it happened... So they were, in, they were in the Big Ten. Exactly. So then. the Big Ten should have done their due diligence by then. Because but, if they suspended... Oh, hear me out. If they suspended the coach for three games and $50,000, then the Big Ten should know why he was suspended. Okay, I don't... I don't... They're in the Big Ten already. And that's so, my point. But I'm saying it happened while they were trying to get into the Big Ten, and that's probably why Rutgers didn't say, "Let I'm going to give the guys credit. Maybe that's why they didn't fire the guy, because they don't want to cause any waves, because they're applying to go to a new conference. They're working on TV contracts. Rutgers made a ton of money going to the Big Ten. I get it. And they didn't want to have any waves like, hey, we got this guy, because maybe the Big Ten doesn't take them, and what conference are they in, the Mountain West? But that's why I'm trying to be clear. Which one happened first? Were they in the Big Ten before he got fired? I mean, I'm sorry, suspended? They it was they the weren't, Big Ten after. Okay, they weren't in the Big Ten when the incident happened. Right. They He got in the Big Ten before he got suspended. Right, that's what I'm trying to trying to understand, what the, what the actual... Okay. So when Eric Murdoch takes the tape in July, June, right. whatever. Right. They were in the Big Ten. Correct. So do I fire him now while I'm applying to get in the Big Ten? Yes, you do. Okay, wait, we all are saying that. I'm sure they decided not to do that because they didn't want to cause any waves. That's all I'm saying. All right, well... That's fine. I just believe that the media has too much power. Um, and I know you guys don't agree. Aisha, I understand that it does for they good do, and They do. They do. They do have too much power. And I'm on, I'm on the same page with you. Um, I just I just think that there are certain situations where we have to be like, thank you, media. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I get it. The tape should have come out. All I'm saying is, is that as Rutgers, stand by your principles. Be strong. Don't allow outside influence to make you do something else that you didn't want to do clearly. Oh, right. No, I'm with you with that. that like, that, they don't that's have where my issue is. There's, see, there's, I'm a, there's no it. principles. They fired him to, to, to get rid of the media storm. Yeah. Exactly. Right, but I'm a little different about that, to be honest. And it's the first time I disagree with you, so I'm going to slap my chair over a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I work for the people. So if this is what the people want, I'm going to give the people what they... I made a decision. Oh, you, the, said, you mean the media, right? Well, no, the people... Again, the media is the light. Well, when the you say people, you work for the people, people, who are you talking about? I'm who a state works? school. I work for the people of the state. Okay, you're talking about Rutgers. Right. Okay, all so right. So I'm Rutgers, um, the okay. institution. I made a decision independent of the people, as they make decisions independent of the people all the time. Absolutely. I might be making a decision today. We don't know about it. Now, a situation gets brought in front of the people, and the people want this. I really work for you, so I should do what you want. 
I shouldn't just be saying, well, no, this is what I feel, but the entire group of people that I work for feel something different. So I, I definitely don't have a problem with that. Okay, well, here, here's where I'm going to differ with your argument just a little bit. If you want to say you work for the people, the people have no say so on who they're going to hire at, at any I level. Mean, the people trust me to to make so, decisions, but exactly. now if they come to me and say, dude, we don't like that decision. And, and do you think I that if they to came the to them and said, hey, they won before all of this happened, we don't want Bob Rice as the coach, do you think that he would have not hired Bob Rice? I think if there was enough people who didn't want a coach, he wouldn't be here. No, 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 no. If he did, if if he would have come in the very beginning when they said we're gonna hire Bob Rice, right? When they announced we're gonna hire Bob Rice as the coach, and the people were like, "Oh no, we don't want him as coach." Do you think that Rutgers would have taken back their offer to Bob Rice? Absolutely not. I asked first off. So take just take different groups of people. I'll just go boosters people. Right. You probably couldn't hire a coach unless all the boosters agreed with it or most of them. Of course. So you couldn't, I, couldn't, I can't just be the subset. AD and go, I'm going to hire this guy and not answer to anyone. But now you're talking about a But if the subset. people's opinion were that important to their decision making, then that would have been factored in exactly. at the initial exactly. well, first um, off, exposure the people, not, of the information. All right, so government works for you. The entire government. You pay taxes, government works for you. You're not trying to get involved in every decision that government makes. Not every decision, but that was a big situation. Big enough well, that no, no, they no. would fine him $50,000. No, I'm saying once the people knew, they made a decision. I'm talking about him talking about them hiring somebody. I don't care who becomes the undersecretary of state's secretary. When I find out he did something crazy. Right. Now we all going to talk about now it. That's yeah. it. Like, I don't. Yeah, I ain't trusting you. Like, if I'm the boss and you guys work for me, I don't, I don't want to know everything that's going on every day. It's a big situation. Now I have an opinion about this. But when I hired you, I trust you to do that part of the job. You don't have to tell me every minute uh, Mo is late. I got 85 things on my plate. I'm not trying to hear that. And I'm never late, by the way. Rarely. Never. You were late Wednesday. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a different show, though. That's not, that has nothing to do with this show. That has nothing to never. do with this show. Slow down. All right. All right. So I just got a little more clarification, right? So... Apparently, the day that Eric Murdoch was going to have a meeting with Rutgers so that they can show them the tape was the same day that they were um, going to announce that Rutgers was going to the Big Ten. Rutgers canceled that meeting. So, to you guys' theory that Rutgers was trying to make sure they got into the Big Ten prior to this coming out, I'm with you 100%. So, I just got a little more clarification. Thank you, Steve, for that info. I appreciate that. Oh, Steve, but, you playing insider now? You playing insider with the insider inside? <laughs> Wow. Okay. <laughs> this is crazy. Okay. All right. All right. I mean, <laughs> okay. Right. I mean, we could go a little bit long into this because I kind of wanted to get into why I don't think the kids told. I mean, we. But like, again, like, are you afraid to tell? You worried about your scholarship? Absolutely. Like, that's exactly right, so what the situation is. And, that, and like you, I had a high school coach that liked to put his hands on people. Yeah. Um, he would tap people in the chest, and it wasn't anything hard, you know, whatever. But he would tap people in the chest, and. It was more of an old school thought process. Um, I'm going to make my kids basically respect me and be a little bit fearful at the end of the day, right? To get them to try and do something that we want them to do. So I understand why the kids did not tell because they probably were A, thinking about their scholarships. B, they're thinking Mike Rice, and I was pronouncing his name incorrectly before. Mike Rice is the head coach. If I go and tell the AD and they don't do anything, I'm screwed over here now because he's going to probably bust my butt in practice every day, every chance he gets. He's probably going to make me want to transfer out of the school. Uh, he's just going to make my life very miserable. That's the thing that's crazy, too. It's all coming out now. There was a kid from, um, I want to say, Lithuania. Okay. That was at Rutgers. Who left because this dude was too abusive. Absolutely. So, there were a couple of kids that left. Right. So it's coming out now. I couldn't imagine being a senior, though. I'm a senior, so I know... Like we're not making the tournament. I got one more game left. I know I'm gonna be mad at this. I'm six right. eight. This dude's five eleven. I'm hitting this dude back. Right, and, and that's the thing. <laughs> Straight you, in his nose. Even if you were a freshman and you hit him back, right? What would have happened was the kid would have probably been branded as a as a problem kid. He would have definitely been suspended. He would have been kicked off the team for uh, conduct conduct detrimental to the team. It would, they would have gone through the whole process. So I understand why the kids didn't tell. I get it. He'd be rich today, though. Right. After that video, today, now the lawsuit would come along, today. you know, yes, whatever. So I, I completely get it. Um, I feel bad for the kids, although a lot of the kids have been coming out in support of Mike Rice. So, oh, no doubt. You know, so that that tells you that. And, and again, I, I did hear one of the kids say that 
I wish you guys would be able to see everything in full context, right? So you're mm-hmm. looking at snippets that were put together. Right. He says some of those times he was laughing and joking when he threw the balls, right. you know, or whatever. So we don't know because we don't we don't know. We weren't there. So we get to see this hodgepodge of, of tape that was put together, but we didn't see it actually live as a whole. So I still can't make an excuse for it. Like with the, the force that some of those balls agreed, were like, especially this, the this one that zipped by the right. dude's head. Like that wasn't any laughing going on. But you know, the thing that, that, that struck me when I watched the tape and I watched it a few times, it had gotten to a point where these kids basically he throw the ball at their legs. They lift their foot up and act like nothing even happened. And they were right back into whatever it was they were doing. Like mm-hmm. that's how, he had brainwashed them and gotten them to a point where it was just nothing to them. And it's nothing. What, what Ish was talking about. It's like Thank how you. somebody Thank is you. in an abusive relationship. They're Thank just you. accepting Thank it. You. So See how I brought that home for y'all? Uh, Thank you. Oh, man. I got Thank the you. ladies liking me you now. Uh, abuse, 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 abuse is abuse is abuse. And <laughs> right, it's just so interesting right. to see how kids over time just make themselves just immune said. to the culture of abuse. Right, like absolutely. I have godchildren that are now playing in these small leagues, football, basketball, and those coaches tear them apart yeah. on the sidelines and you see the, the the parents in the stands watching and they're just you know they're used to it and one of the kids actually didn't want to play football anymore because the coach was too hard and you just don't know as you raise children you're like some parents were looking at as weakness like my child is going to be weak mm-hmm. because he couldn't stand up to his coach and there's a there's just definitely a line like between tearing somebody down and building them back up right and, like for me verbal abuse like i in my sports life, I grew up with that. So Absolutely. If somebody used the word that someone else would think is derogatory, like for me, I'd just be like, I wouldn't even take the literal meaning of the word. So if, I guess we could say that, right? So like if somebody right. said, oh, you faggot, I wouldn't even say, oh, man, this dude thinks I sleep with dudes. Like I, Right, that's that, right. So for me, it's different. Right. But to each his own. And I, if I was a parent, I would feel differently about my kid hearing that. And me here and that. Well, so. here's the other thing for Rutgers, and, and I really want to get off this topic, but since you just brought that part up, the actual homophobic slur, for Rutgers not to fire this guy after what happened last year with an actual it was a music student who killed himself on the George Washington Bridge because the, he was outed. And the girls' team. Oh, it was a girls' team player too? No, no, the, the, the girls' team, Imus, right? Oh, with Don Imus, right. right, calling them nappy headed hoes or right. whatever it was he called them. Absolutely. So for Rutgers not to fire him immediately behind that after that situation just happened last year, right. so horrible. It's, Bad it's, job. It's a whole lot of. Um, um, irresponsible situations that have happened. So it's a no-brainer to me as an AD. And if my AD doesn't do it as the president, and if the president do it as a member of the board of directors, I'd be like, all right, you guys are all jacked this up. Mm-hmm. You got to wear this. You got, you guys are responsible for thousands of kids. At his press conference, the president's press conference, he's talking about coming to the North Campus and going to the New Brunswick Campus. Right. All the kids on all these campuses. You're responsible for all of them. Absolutely. And you get paid well to be responsible Absolutely. for them. Absolutely. So this is completely irresponsible. Well, they're calling for his head. I think He's there are about 20, 25 next. faculty have yeah. signed petitions to get the president out of He's there, next. too. So they definitely call for his you head. Have, when you get a chance, listen to this press conference. I, I definitely Back will. Madeline, this guy was, oh, God, it was crazy. It was embarrassing to watch, too. Really? Embarrassing to watch. All right, we're down to 13 minutes. We're going to do a quick round robin of... Uh, potpourri of things here that uh, I have. Can I throw on. away the um, syllabus for today? Yeah, I have put together this long list <laughs> as I do each week. I prepare for so that we don't run out of topics. That's the beauty uh, of radio. Yes, ab- absolutely. Um, all right, so Jay Z, part time partial owner of the New Brooklyn Nets. I almost said New Jersey. Um, obviously, Grammy winning rapper, all of this other stuff. He actually is now into the actual sports agency arena. I love it. He signed a Major League Baseball player, Robinson Cano, who plays for the actual Yankees. How do you feel about it? I, I, listen, man. It's, it, I have a, um, a a soft spot, I guess. This is the easiest way to say it. Like, I like to see guys who start off doing one thing and evolving into other stuff. So, looking at Jay-Z as a businessman, it's amazing to me. And for him, he's got to give up. He may have to give up his part of the Nets. Yes. If he decides he wants to get into the basketball players, right. he's going to have to give it up. Absolutely. But it's, it's amazing to me to watch him go from, and listening to his lyrics when he first came out, talking about hustling and dope and all this other stuff, to being the businessman that he is. I'm absolutely proud of him. Okay. It's kind of hard for me to, like, he's about my age, so I can't. Right. But I'm proud of him. Absolutely. I'm with you 100% on that. All right. Next. Brittany Griner. 
Um, the six foot eight center who plays for the uh, Baylor. I don't even know what their mascot name is, but for Baylor women's basketball, women's basketball at Baylor University. Um, the owner of the Dallas Mavericks, Mark Cuban, said that he would actually draft Brittany Griner in the NBA to play with men. Publicity How do you stunt. feel about that? It's a publicity stunt. I'm she with can't, you. She can't play in the NBA. She I got some not. ladies in here. I hope you're not mad at me. She can't play in the NBA. She, she cannot play in the NBA. But let me let me tell you something, though. I'm cool with giving her a chance. I'm not. Right, check it out. I'm cool with that. If a guy can have a chance to go play in the WNBA. Yeah, nah, that's not going to happen. I that's play in the WNBA. Nah, you Really? Yeah. 90 grand? I average 40. What? So here's why I think it's bad a bad idea that Mark Cuban even made this statement. Because her being six foot eight and having manly features, her voice is just as deep as ours. Oh, it's deeper than mine. Um for him to actually put that out there in the media, it almost perpetuates all of the negative stuff that she gets. And she hears it everywhere she goes. And you know she hears it everywhere she goes about her basically being a man. Yeah, I mean, that's cool. But remember, Nancy Lieberman, she's the one saying, oh, well, I think she can do it. So. I, I get it, but she cannot. So in my opinion, physically, I know she can't do it. Right. That's where the problem comes That's in. the thing. Not her skill level. Just right. physically, she'd be dominated. So. If there's ever going to be a woman to play in the NBA, it's going to be a guard. Oh, no doubt. It, it will be a guard because they just won't take the, the same pressure, the, the, the grind and, and uh, phys- physicality that's going to happen down in the post. So, okay, so we are kind of semi in agreement with that. Um, the Pac-10 college basketball the commissioner Ed Rush, former NBA ref, he basically made a statement that he'd pay five grand and a trip to Cancun, I guess, Cancun. if someone would give uh, the coach for the Arizona uh, Wildcats a technical. And you know what happened in the game last week? He got, in the, he got a technical, his first technical of the year, yeah. and his team ended up losing by two points because of the, basically because of his technical. So he ended up uh, resigning this week behind, amidst the actual pressure um, of his statement. Supposedly, it wasn't anything serious. It was just in jest. Um, former referee uh, Tim, Donahue, Tim Donahue, who was caught up in a, 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 a gambling, racketing, we had point shaving yeah. scheme. He came out and said that when Ed Rush was in the NBA, he would say say things like that regularly about players, giving NBA players texts. So how do you feel about him resigning? How do you feel about the scenario? Again, I think he should have been fired. Okay. Um, and these resignations are really firing. No, without so question. I think he should have been question. fired when it happened. You have When you have these um, high post jobs, there's more responsibility. There's more of an ethical responsibility for those people. So you can't be that guy. Because what does the coach say of that team next year if he's still working there? They've got it in for me. You can never trust the referee. So Absolutely. That situation just would become a terrible thing. Are you taking photos there? Wait a minute. Is he? <laughs> He's taking photos. Of Mo's getting real comfortable. Listen, okay. I need you to continue on. We got eight minutes. You got a lot of stuff to get to. I'm done. Oh, okay. All right. Next, we're going to move on to the NBA. <laughs> and again, we apologize. It's kind of an abridged show today. But uh, we. But listen, we learned guys... something new today. What's that? We could go an hour straight. Oh, we can. Oh, I, but I knew that already. You didn't know that? Oh, no. I'm so nervous every day here. I'm nervous. No, I'm the one. No, I'm, I'm sweating right now. Okay. <laughs> the NBA, let's move on into that. The Denver Nuggets, who are, I think, the third seed in the Western Conference, um, they were having an outstanding season. They had a major blow dealt to them this week when their uh, starting small forward, Danilo Gallinari, I did pronounce it correctly towards ACL how do you feel that's gonna what do you think that's gonna actually do to Denver and their chances of moving along in the Western Conference second best scorer on the team um probably second most versatile player to Iguodala another AI um yeah second round I had I had an outside chance of them making it to the finals second round though I think they're a second round team now Ty Lawson is injured as well so between the two of those people being hurt, I think it may be a problem. Okay. I'm with you 100% on that. They definitely only get to the second round and they're done. Yeah. The New York Knicks, Carmelo Anthony. Before we start with that, Bernard King, former New York Knicks, Washington. Let's clap it up for him. Absolutely. Let's clap it up for him. Yeah. He is going to be inducted in the NBA Hall of Fame. Well-deserved. Um, he had an incredible season. It's crazy to me that he did this. Well, he's going to be inducted at the same time that Carmelo did something that no one had done for the Knicks since him, which he scored 40 points or more in three-game stretch. Now, Bernard did 50, I think, if I remember correctly, 
against um, Texas. I think they call it the Texas Massacre. He played all three Texas teams, uh, Houston, San Antonio, and Dallas. Uh, and he dropped 50 every night, if I remember. I remember that watching on Channel 9. Uh, it's crazy. Well, first off, sounds. Carmelo is the new Bernard King. Well, I, I can I can go with that. So he, he that is, the symmetry of this is just great. It, it's, right. it's great. So hats off to Bernard King. I'm, I'm really happy for him. And I'm happy for him for a couple of reasons. Um, I'm, I'm happy about the situation for a couple of reasons because I think it makes Vince Carter's role run into the uh, NBA Hall of Fame even that much easier. No, well, we don't have much. Time. Absolutely, we but I'm just saying that's just the personal okay. opinion that I had. But Carmelo, he's doing his thing over there. How do you how do you feel about him? How do you think the Knicks are going to move along? Do you think it doesn't mean anything? Um, um, they're ten games in now in a row. Eleven, I think. Oh, it's eleven. Right. I think they could. Um, they're they could easily get to the Eastern Conference Finals. I think Carmelo is is scoring lights out. So I look at Carmelo Anthony as a scorer. He's, really like, he's a great scorer. That doesn't necessarily make him a great player. I know we argue this every week. So I think he's on a run that's uh, unparalleled by many. So I love his game. He's just a scorer, though. Absolutely. I like him for what he is. Let's not try to make him something more than that. Points wins games. <laughs> I agree with you 100%. <laughs> so, again, let's move along. <laughs> Since we have yeah, we gotta hurry up and get these cameras because you gotta see my face on this one. I put my hood on too. Something's going on over here. So, because we have two young ladies that live uh, in LA, I want to ask them about the Lakers and the uh, Los Angeles Clippers. Are you guys supporting them? If you are, which team are you supporting? How do you feel about them? Just wait. Let me ask them a quick question too because oh, I wanted to ask them. So I'm debating on where I'm gonna live. Do I stay on the East Coast or West Coast? Well, the weather on the West Coast is amazing. But, I mean, this is home. You can always travel back. I say, for me, West Coast right now is feeding is feeding me. I get my life on the West Coast in the sunshine. West Coast. Yeah, hey, I'm, I'm where I would love to live on the West Mo, Coast. Mo, you're going to come visit me, right? Absolutely. August, I am there for seven days. <laughs> Six days, actually. <laughs> Seventh day, I got to be back here. That's the way it no, works. you don't. I'll hold it down while you're gone. Anyway, I'll be there for <laughs> six days. Okay. Um... In full disclosure, I was actually supposed to be going next week, but uh, she has to actually work, so uh, we had to push it out until uh, August. I August. Think well, wait a minute. I didn't get invited to come. No, you didn't. Okay. This, this um, so you don't again, have that kind of history. Again, <laughs> how do you guys feel about the Lakers? Do you are you are you guys even paying attention? No, I'm a Laker hater. I'm a I'm a I'm a certified Laker hater. Me I'm too. From, I'm from New York. Um, I went to school in Miami. I'm a Heat fan all day. Um, I support my Knicks. And um, truthfully, only because I'm from Brooklyn, okay. do I support them. So you're a Net fan now? I'm a bandwagon Net okay. fan, right. simply because Brooklyn okay. is in front of me. Our insider is a huge Nets fan. He was, a New Jersey, he, was, he was definitely a diehard Nets fan. And you missed Probably story. from Jersey still. Yeah, he's definitely from Jersey. Are I'm, you? I'm the same. I'm not really an, I'm not really a Laker fan. Okay. I'm kind of indifferent. Did you guys catch on to the is there a Clipper buzz out there? Like did it take De- over? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the Clippers is the new black. Yes, they okay. really are. Okay. They really are. I didn't even, I Clipper, don't even the know Clippers the Clippers are Obama. <laughs> 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 LA is very, very happy the with the with the Clippers. Their yeah, lost the Lakers really? have lost their identity. Yeah. Okay, right. so it is what we think, right? Yeah. Absolutely. It's unfortunate, but they had a long run with it. I mean, you know, they just gotta move over right now. Yeah, the they're Clippers. not gonna move over. They're, 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 the Lakers are the Lakers. They're not gonna accept that. Well, not gonna you know what's so crazy too? Like, the love is with the Clippers. I'm too. not a big Kobe fan. Right. Um, I respect this game. I respect his talent. I hate to see him go out like this though. With him not being number one out there, that doesn't matter. Like tough, so, so. Uh, yeah, well, you know, to me, just, a, just straight from a basketball enthusiast perspective, to me, it doesn't really matter one way or another. But not much matters to out. me, though. So we know you're right. Not much matters to me. Um, Wait, but, uh, my, FYI, we have people taking pictures of each other taking pictures. So. Well, because we're not we're not <laughs> here often. I mean. This is a once in a lifetime thing. This once is in very a lifetime, exciting. You're not back. Wait a well, I, I I hope to be invited wait, wait, back. Wait, you're not coming back. Correct? Well, I didn't get the invitation yet. You're right. You probably won't either. And you know, with you, Mo, it's we're almost at twelve o'clock. How well, about that? We'll see that? what happens after August. Yes. Um, back to you. One more thing, Russell. Derek Rose. Should he or should he not come back for the uh, Chicago Bulls? The game is mental, man. If he doesn't have it mentally, don't come back. I I had that injury, so it's tough to get through, but. And he's such an explosive player, and I don't think he should. Uh, I don't think he should do it. He's not comfortable. 
I, I'm with you 100%. And I, I think, though, the problem is, is that he's been working out pretty well in practice. Supposedly, he looks like 100% out there. And I think his teammates are going to probably start looking at him a little bit sideways, just a little bit, because they're grinding. And, and I give the Chicago Bulls a ton of credit. I think they're five now in the East. Um, they are grinding. And they played way better than I thought. Um, so his teammates are probably going to start looking at him a little bit sideways. So we'll see what he decides to do. I don't think he should come back. I think he should just wait the year at this point because they're not winning a national uh, NBA championship. And lastly, the Eastern Conference, the playoffs have been set. Now, the matchups are not 100% set, but the eight teams that are going to be in are now official as Milwaukee made it official last night. So we're going to see what's going to happen over in the, in the, on the West. The Lakers are still battling out with the uh, Utah Jazz. Um, I think Dallas Mavericks are just out of that race. I don't think they're going to be able to jump over two teams. So they lost a tough game against LA. They did, and that put them out. That was the that was the nail in the coffin. They did. Um, I'm going to start our sign out, and then I'm going to let you take it home. Obviously, thank um, you again. Appreciate that, boss. If you missed any part of this show, you can always go out to Podomatic.com, search All Access 660, follow us on Twitter at All Access 660. My partner Rasul Sharif 660. Um, the music of Mr. Steve Wills, who will be on from 1 to 2 today. I'm, t- I'm sorry, from 12 to 1 today. So please stay on and listen as he plays the smooth grooves. You can follow him at Breeze DBL. I want to thank our two guests um, again, uh, Kelly Stewart, Masaisha Hines. Thank you guys so much for coming in. We really appreciate it. We apologize for all of the uh, technical difficulties. And again, you guys can just shout out your Twitters. I think it's Kelly underscore Stewart. Yes, yeah, spelled K E L L E E. And Aisha. Aisha Hines, A-I-S-H-A-H-I-N-D-S. All right, partner, take us out of here. Yeah, let oh, me. Oh, and uh, I inside it, too. Thanks for coming. Well, oh, yeah, and him, 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 too. Yeah. You gave him, what's your Twitter handle, Insider? <laughs> the Insider at Twitter. At Lightskin.com. Oh, at Lightskin.com. <laughs> Again, thanks, ladies. You guys are really, really cool. Um, absolute pleasure to meet you guys. Ish, I thought you were mute at 10. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, clearly, <laughs> one hour and a cup of tea later. Whoa, she's a handful now. Thanks for coming. I apologize for the technical difficulties, Mr. Insider. I'm sorry for shouting out your name. Um, you cool with that though? You right? All right. Uh, Mo, thanks for inviting everybody. Steve, is this going to be the best show ever today? From 12.05 to 1. Is this going to be the best show ever? All right. Can I make a couple of requests? Because Steve's going live today. He's going live. He's got four turntables in here. It looks like Funkmaster Flex around here. So I don't know how you drag this stuff in here. So you might want to stay tuned for this. Thanks for listening. We'll try to uh, address those technical issues, and hopefully they won't come back up. You guys be safe. Stay tuned to Steve Will.